Hey guys, how's it going? It's Leon here. I got to interview two other INFPs and I'm an INFP myself. And what we got to talk about is how we express all eight of the cognitive functions and we got to compare notes as well. In this video, we talk about four of the functions. The next video, if you stay tuned on this channel, we talk about the other four cognitive functions as well. And I want to let you know that if you're struggling with urges, cravings, bad habits, um, intense emotions, and you want to be able to reduce them. I have created a video about how you could do that. I have a method that tends to work pretty well. It's something I've used with my clients and something that I've drawn from the scientific literature in psychotherapy. If you want to check out that video, I have a link to it up above and also down below. And I also have written an article, Seeing the World as Full of Life. So if you want to see that article, I have a link to the article down below in the description box. Hey, everybody, guess what? We have three INFPs together in a Zoom room. And so we're going to talk about... Uh, Basically, I had this really random idea last week. It was like, what if I just like pulled out like a couple of websites that talked about INFPs and see like how much we relate to it? And these websites they actually talk about like all the functions um, within the INFP, and then they wrote some stuff. And I said, oh, some of this stuff. I mean, a lot of it felt like it's like relatable to me, but I want to see like how other INFPs relate to it too. Okay, so this is this is like a. This is from Socionics, and they like to call the INFPs INFJs because they're not. <laughs> it's kind of annoying. <laughs> but I think that the Myers-Briggs system came first. We have the INFP. That's why I'm annoyed <laughs> when, when they use the same letter code and then they switch it. So what happened is that because INFPs have injured feeling first, and that's a judging function, and Socionics is like, Mars Briggs, I want to show you the right way to call the INFP. It's supposed to be INFJ because they start with the J function. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, I do like their other like letter system. I also call us the EII, which everybody else hates this system, but I like it because it's like different. And I like I don't know, I like the three letter kind of thing. But anyway, so the first part here with the interior feeling says, um, so we are very attuned to the psychological atmosphere of interaction and to their feelings towards people and things. They treasure deep feelings of attachment and strive to deepen emotional bonds between people and harmonize relationships. When those people close to us suffer emotionally, we will do everything in our power to raise the emotional condition in the individual, often to our expense. So I was curious, like how how much you would like relate to this if you do relate to it. <laughs> we get a thumbs up from Robin. So that that of it, Robin. So what what part do you like? Do you see as you relate to? I most strongly relate to. I'll pick out the parts I most strongly relate to and the parts I least relate to. I guess. Okay. So I definitely relate to that. I notice the psychological atmosphere between people or like in rooms and stuff right. i definitely a hundred percent notice my own feeling towards people and things um right. at all at all times um treasure deep feelings of attachment and strive to develop emotional bonds between people and harmonize relationships i do have feelings of attachment depending on the person you know that right but those that are deep, I guess I would value. Right, yeah. Um, striving to deepen the emotional bond between people and harmonizing relationships. I kind of get it. Like, I mean, if someone was coming to me with like an emotional conflict situation, I would definitely um, do my best to help them with that. And, yeah, to be supportive uh, of them with that yeah like i guess if i maybe if i see someone that's like kind of on their own or something i might try to bring them in but hmm, i don't know yeah. if i'm a great harmonizer i might be better more one-to-one -one. i'm not sure about the phrasing right the phrasing is you mentioned about rebellion. tendencies towards rebellion <laughs> <laughs> not rebellion not rebellion but you're, you're you could speak out at times 
Yes. I, so I'm not totally sure about that one. It might just be the phrasing, though. Right. It but could then, be the phrasing. Then it says, yes, when those people that I'm close to suffer emotionally, I'll do everything in my power to, to help them, I'm sure. Okay. How about you, Jenny? Um, I totally relate to the first sentence, like being attuned to the um, psychological atmosphere and inter interaction. I'm really like very attuned to it. Even like if I go into a room, I could um, kind of feel the vibe, but I don't know if I could read deeply into people <laughs> right. in general. Um, so about striving to deepen emotional bonds between people um, and in terms of attachment, maybe as Robin said, particular people I'm close to, but then if they're like, I could be like a generally like detached individual indiv in general, but friendly. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Uh, very friendly, I would say, would be the So word. Robin agrees with that. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then when those people that the EII is close to suffer emotionally, I will do, um, they will do everything in their power to raise the emotional co uh, condition condition um i i definitely relate to that but sometimes i feel like um i would just listen for like right. it could be hours and hours to someone when they're feeling really um stressed that that goes a long um, way in itself yeah. but then in terms of the guidance aspect maybe i could wait till the end to, pro to provide that guidance but usually i would just prefer to listen right yeah. um you, you feel like i'm kind of curious like um mm -hmm. Do you feel like sometimes you find a difficulty to set boundaries around that? So, like, for example, like someone comes to you and they have difficulties, right? And then yes. uh, they kind of like, they might like absorb your time, <laughs> you yes. know? but you can't like, yes. you can't push them away. But like, you also like have a lot of like empathy for them. I totally agree with that. It's like, it's so yeah. hard to interrupt people as well. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like um, for me, I guess if people are like in, in my circle, like they're kind of like in the special circle, then I have like a pretty high degree of emotional attunement, right? Otherwise, I'm like, uh, like with the surrounding circle around that, I'm pretty cordial or I could be friendly, but like, um, it, I feel like it's very different, right? Um, and then there's this next part about sizing people up. So we're like instinctual, we trust our inner feelings. And we could feel for others. Um, and we kind of like, uh, it says, treat them the way we, that they want to be treated. That is with respect, right? So I was wondering, like, in terms of, like, sizing people up, I guess, like, kind of reading people a bit. Is that something that you can't see in yourself? The Robin, you want to um, I actually, can I just go back to the last one for a second? Just yeah, sure. Um. I think that I would only act that way if it seemed wanted and if it seemed asked for, I wouldn't intrude um, right. or like push myself in. Otherwise, I we, we, are, we are afraid I'd of intruding. Observing. <laughs> yes, I'd yes. observing and taking in and seeing the emotional temperature and what's going on with people, but I wouldn't always act whatsoever. So yes. I just want to correct that. Yeah, um, definitely not pushy and, and intrusive. I like I like to like imagine people's like lives and and what's like in their soul, like what's what's going on within them, what their the struggles may be, right? But I kind of like often like keep a lot of this stuff to myself. Yeah, keeping it to myself, and if I'm asked for help, I have no problem talking to people through their feelings. Yeah, exactly. Like if um, people come to you for help, right? There, there's, yeah. I think INFPs are not like very pushy people. Yeah, I, I, I may in fact see that people might want to be left alone um, or just assume that people would want to be left alone. Right. Because I think, I mean, very often I would like, if I'm having a bad day, it doesn't necessarily mean I want some random person. That's true. We're, we're like very mindful of people's space. Yes. Also, yes. But we're so mindful of our own space too. So we need a lot of space. But I, I may have like a few tricks up my sleeve if like I like the person where I like without being um having a conversation about their feelings, just be recognizing that they're having a bad time. So act differently to respect that. Right. Moment. Yeah. Adjust. But I feel like like everything we do is like a bit like more subtle. Like it's like it's subtle. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. Okay, next one. Uh, or so the next one is um, we have like this is the extra intuition. So this they kind of like write about how extra intuition relates back to injury feeling here. So we INFPs have a natural understanding of people's inner makeup and see what could be done that could bring them closer to their ideals. They have a well-developed view of what people in relationships should be like and are able to help others reach those ideals. Uh, they understand people very well, could give good advice and strong understanding of the inner workings, even the most complicated minds. Complicated. They have <laughs> developed good ideas concerning ideal emotional states for individuals and always have advice of it as to how an individual can reach that ideal. Any, th any thoughts about this? What about the... Um... We'll get to the next one. <laughs> next part. <laughs> because yeah, I thought, no, I thought yeah, the next part's interesting. So <laughs> leaving, okay. it, leaving it as a surprise. I think... That... Yeah, I don't know if I understand everybody very well. I think the more that I have in common with them, the better that I understand them. But right. some people that are very different from me can be hard for me to understand. And that's why the MBTI can be so helpful. Yeah, that's a very extra intuiting me, though. <laughs> you're, say, you're saying like, uh, because there, there's so much more that's possible behind people, right? And can't, there's no way to like absolutely capture that in a way. So I was like, um, I think a lot of the idealism also comes from extra intuition because we could see like what is possible out there. Like ideally, like in terms of our relationships, what, what, what could be. Right. And then um, we, I guess we have some sort of idea. Yeah, the next part about understanding people, well, I could see like, yeah, that people could be complicated. So like the, there, there's that thing where they wrote about INFPs and that even if someone is quote unquote, like evil, you can kind of like see their point of view in a sense, like could kind of see their heart in a way. They so, are good at seeing every point of view i guess right yeah. So, yeah even if something is terrible we can doesn't mean we condone it but we might be able to sort of envision where that person might be coming from towards that act right exactly yeah exactly and then so we have we could kind of create a vision about like where that person could go possibly like what is their hidden potential and I guess this next part is whether like always having advice. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> I always have advice about how people can achieve their ideal. And uh, again, like just like we've mentioned earlier, I'm like afraid of appearing uh, pushy too. Yeah. I'm yeah, like oh, sorry. You can go. No, I was just going to say like, I don't always want it. Like, even if I think there is something that maybe it's like, I see someone something benefiting someone right. like maybe like a certain job or like like area that their skill set seems to suit or something that might benefit them to go into i wouldn't want to say like you know what you should do that like right. it just seems so pushy like so you know maybe i would like subtly compliment them on certain strengths but yeah i wouldn't like guide people what to do with themselves yeah we wouldn't, yeah, we wouldn't be so business. pushy about it yeah right Okay. Uh, Eugenia, you would like to oh, say. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. So um, definitely, like, um, relate to not pushing people and sort of, like, only give advice when they want advice as well because there's also, like, a time where, you know, they prefer you to listen to them. But right. there's also times where, like, can, you know, I have some advice or structure as well. So just tensing, like, what they need at the moment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it could come from like doing on to others kind of vibe. Like I know like I wouldn't want people coming up to me and being like, well, you should go into this or that too much. Like it would feel a little overbearing. Mm. But there have been times where I've received compliments on certain things that like I didn't realize that may have been strength areas. And then it's like you can come up with the idea on your own where it's like, oh, maybe I should pursue that. So that's a much less intrusive way, I think, of going about it. Like if you say like, oh, you're really good at acting. And I was like, oh, I never knew that about myself. Thanks. And maybe you start to think, oh, maybe I should take a class in that or something rather than someone like kind of trying to push you towards it. Right. Just like just like opening up the possibilities for it. 
Yes, yes, because you may not know that about yourself before. So it's like you may see someone's strength that they didn't even know they had. So you could be like, wow, that's so cool that you could do X, but you're not saying, you know, you should do X. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, definitely strengths-based compliments as always really helps us figure out like what people's potentials are and what they're and what our potential is as well i think those comments really help right there's just a therapist called carl rogers and i think he's in infp so he 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 really much said that it's important not to like push your own perspective or view onto the the client um and to really just open up space for them that they, they, they could just just truly be themselves and genuinely speak from their perspective. And eventually they get more in tune with like who they are and what they want from their life. Yeah. Um, here's the, okay. <laughs> this is kind of, this is why I, I saved it. Oh, I, I, I think it's funny that there's an advertisement here. I said, make a tax smart investment investing plan with Schwab. So that's, that's our expert thinking um advert <laughs> oh god yeah, that's, so that's so unrelatable <laughs> <laughs> one okay so one of the largest complaints of INFPs involves around the idea of wasted potential a lot of neuroses and drive come from fears they are not achieving the maximum possible ideal in a certain area of their life so unlike ENFPs though INFPs considering leveraging potential more in terms of depth, mastery of one or several specific areas rather than breadth. So I was wondering uh, if any of you could relate to this worry of wasted potential, because I think I can. (laughs) Is that something you could see? Okay. Yeah, I definitely relate um, just being more like a generalist rather than like a specialist and it's so it's right. so hard for me to focus on like one subject or one like area area well, it's like there's like practice. different like possible things that you could do right? yes right. exactly i was wondering but i could do this and this and this with my life you know instead of just like sitting down and focusing on one specific area and there's like an an f aspect of it where it's like um about the maximum possible ideal because the insured insured feelings has a bit of that like a uh, perfectionist quality like to it I, like i i at least i see it in myself anyway <laughs> so like so i just like i could worry about like oh what if i don't like completely realize this right so like there's some types that are weaker at expert intuition and the thing is they don't really see the full possibility in themselves right which is a good thing and a bad thing. The bad thing is they, they don't necessarily see that, but the good thing is that they don't stress about this so much. How about you, Robin? Oh, this one I find totally relatable, like from yeah. the earliest times of my life till now. <laughs> yes, people, like I used to get comments on my report cards that said didn't live up to potential and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I always like to take things in, but my output is not great. Like I love to learn, but yeah. I'm not always doing something with my what I've learned. I've just like to, yeah. to keep learning it. Um, so yes, and also um, that's my problem too. By the way, yeah, no, but I, it, it always felt like that. Like you know, you'd have certain abilities, but you wouldn't like work on them. I guess. Yeah, there's like I feel like I'm at peace could suffer from like kind of like a lack of discipline in a way. Oh yeah. We we're like good learners, mm-hmm. but then like we get excited about something and we, but we don't like completely like uh, follow through with it. Yeah. So much. <laughs> yeah. And then as far as it says, unlike ENFPs, we think more in terms of depth than in breadth, but um, I'm not sure about this one. I think okay. um, there are areas that like, Like, for instance, when I draw, I always tend to draw portraits because that's what I favor. Mm -hmm. But for a while, it made me stop drawing because I was like, well, you know, all you could do is draw this one thing and you can't do other stuff. You can't do perspective. You can't do buildings. Like, what good is it if you could draw people? So I I gave up on it for that reason, which was kind of really silly. Mm -hmm. 
so yeah I guess that would have like if I was going to explore in depth I would have just kept focusing on portraits instead of being like oh it's not broad enough I give up right because I thought like I needed to do more breadth but that didn't make me try new things it just made me give up yeah there's this idea like I know piece could probably see like the possibility of more the kind of like the grass is greener kind of thing so it's like hard to necessarily focus on what we can be doing now in a way I think exactly yeah. I totally relate to that it's like have many hobbies but then like doing one hobby like I play the piano but then thinking I should be doing something else like making dollhouses and um just so many hobbies, but not having that focus just to stick with it. Oh, be sure to check out Robin's and, and Jenny's channels. Uh, so Robin has like a video up about like a, is an introduction to the MV tie. It's pretty yeah, cool. I was trying to make a basic introduction for beginners. Right. Yeah. And, and Jenny uh, has been creating dollhouses. Yes. Well, I was cheating a little bit. Dollhouse kits. Kits. <laughs> kits. Kits. <laughs> that sounds interesting. Okay. So this is where they kind of talk about functions that you don't usually uh, associate with the INFP, but they basically talk about how all the functions are in the INFP and how they do they manifest. So with they say with introverted thinking, that INFPs do not easily abstract themselves from the human dimension and apply cold logic. When they try to do this, they easily become unsure if their reasoning is correct. Um, they feel not everything can be classified under assistance since everything has its unique individual attributes. Uh, it's like if you see that as something that you relate to. I could start myself. I, I see like, I think maybe initially INFPs can have difficulty getting into the MBTI because it's like a system, like in just categories and people fit into different categories. And that doesn't really sit well because we're interviewed feelers. So we see like everyone is like very individual and unique and it's like hard to classify or some things are very hard to put words to because, or things that are hard to define because we know that people are much more than that or situations are much more than what could be defined by words or categories. Um, I guess my thought would be if we are dealing with a human situation, then yeah. cold logic wouldn't really be beneficial. But if you're dealing with, Maybe like a math problem, it would be. So you might want right. to use it in some situations and not others. Um, I think it comes to like the interior logic. It's not probably str struggling to understand the functions in like an abstract way as well. So I really appreciate this exercise because sometimes I'm like, T E T I. Like, is it are there examples of that? Because I don't really understand. I I don't know whether like the weakness in ti has like something to do with that not right just yeah i agree um when i've read descriptions of ti i've struggled to understand it although i know one of my closest friends is ti dominant mm -hmm. but when i read the descriptions it just seems like a lot of words and I, don't <laughs> know. I, don't know. I guess because we don't have a strong ti i mean we're we have TI last, TE last, and then our TI must come pretty far down in our stack. Right, yeah. They say, like, this is actually a, a function, um, this, this sociana say that this is a function that we could actually develop. Like, this is something that could noticeably improve significantly. Let's go on to this expert sensing. So this is actually, like, in socionics, this is, so INFPs are known by, using introverted feeling, extra intuition, introverted sensing, extra thinking. And it but it says like there's these are the shadow functions and then like extra sensing out of the shadow functions is the weakest shadow function. So how it shows is that we are typically negligent of our surroundings, have difficulty keeping track of objects or constantly monitoring things and people around them. <laughs> I think for me that's like a, it's painful to read because it's true. For me, <laughs> they, they can be passive and self-observed, often preferring to wait for things to happen rather than make them happen. So they tend to have a lot of lost opportunities and they may be oblivious to hints from someone who's romantically interested, giving the wrong impression they're not interested in them. So I, so I don't know how, like, how much of this that you do relate to yourself. Um, I think I agree with having a very 
leak SE, but I, mm-hmm. it's a function that I want really bad. <laughs> um, and I admire yeah. it in other people because it seems right. like so yeah. fun and useful for a living. <laughs> um, right. And yeah, and maybe I like being around people with that function if they don't mind that I don't have it. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I kind of, sometimes I like to shadow them. I like how people shadow other people at work. I kind of like shadow them and they kind of like invite me into their, their world a bit. Um, Jenny? Well, yeah, I definitely agree with like being negligent of my surroundings. Right. And probably why I almost get hit by trains or cars <laughs> once in a while because I'm just like <laughs> only once in a while yeah yeah only once in a while <laughs> just having like lacking that sensing ability to drive very well you're right and I'm still trying to get my driver's license by the way but it's just that just that extra bird sensing is definitely not that st- that strong in me <laughs> <laughs> well for me like I don't want to speak for other NPs but I feel like um, for me, first, first of all, I'm very like not not aware of my surroundings and mm-hmm. what's like going on because I'm like very absorbed in my own world a lot. Mm-hmm. So I kind of ignore that. I, I don't see that as important. I remember like <laughs> some of my driving uh, tests, like the at least the written part, I, I had to retake it like uh, I think three times. <laughs> because what happened was and and the the instructor was like really surprised and that's because when my parents were driving when anybody was driving i was like not like looking out or looking at like the signs or anything like i just didn't care or didn't i, I was just like daydreaming so i the a lot of things that were like common sense are just like to me like oh and I, I just wasn't like, paying attention to that stuff yeah like the rules <laughs> of the road like, yeah. I, mean, I have a driver's license but Every time I'm a passenger in the car, I sit and look out the window and daydream. <laughs> yes. I'm not paying attention Same to the here. laws of the road. So it has had to be taught to me from right. a beginner point of view because I was not interested. I only notice things I'm interested in. Right. I think, uh, yeah, I think as far as I see, it's like I just filter out what's interesting from what's not interesting so i'm not noticing the full environment just what seems like fun yeah anything like i'm good at noticing things that are like amusing yeah that's that's weird and that somehow i see that but i don't see other things it's like the expert intuition just sees like the funniest like stuff that are not like like practically useful (laughs) it's like oh that's funny (laughs) <laughs> I might be wrong, but I feel like the human mind can't notice like absolutely everything, even if you have strong SE, but it's going to vary right. a lot among people. So if you have a strong SE, you'll notice a lot more. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, how about this thing about like lost opportunities? Because th- there's also expert sensing and people with high expert sensing, they just act like like uh, they immediately act on things. But for for me, I kind of especially before I, I i try to correct for it now but like before uh like I, I i do think i kind of more fantasize about things and then kind of uh not exactly working to act on them and that makes sense and it does like there, there could be like a lot of lost opportunities too yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah yeah definitely struggling to act on those opportunities when it comes to like jobs and you know, seeing jobs and like, should I apply to that? Never mind. I guess I'm not going to apply to that. Like lots of thinking and right. indecisiveness. Mm-hmm. Even sometimes something I really want to do and like the deadline goes by and you're sort of like, oh yeah, I wanted to mm-hmm. sign up for that. It was yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think extra like sensors, extra sensors see things in such a very clear way. So like they, once they decide on something, then they kind of like go for it. For us, we kind of like, we we kind of sit on the fence more. We we see like too many perspectives on something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I felt like for me with the romantic aspect of this, I I could relate to in a way. Well, I don't know. Like I'm trying to like figure out like whether I'm oblivious or like maybe I just don't want to act on it. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, I think maybe someone who's not an INFP wrote this. So to that person, that the INFP is oblivious to hints. But I'm like, maybe I can, maybe I do know. But I'm like, but I'm like either like uh, selective or like not like not action oriented. If that makes sense. I think that might have to do with the difference between like having perspective on. Sometimes you lose perspective on things that involve ourselves. So like right. because we can. We're pretty observant of like people's feelings and stuff, but I think maybe not towards ourselves. So like sometimes I might notice if someone seems interested in another person. Um, yeah, I, I yeah I notice these yeah. things. Yeah, and sometimes you can be unsure of your own feelings, even though we're aware of, we are aware of our own feelings most of the time. But sometimes you can just be unsure. Yeah, especially if like it's someone that you like that's when it's really hard to tell if they like you because you have an emotional investment right exactly it becomes confusing more than if it's someone that you don't have any feelings for right isn't that annoying (laughs) (laughs) um so um so outsiders often think INFPs oblivious because willing to neglect basic needs although not no means necessary this may manifest as a general re- rejection of, or aversion to violence or force as a means to life ways to life i didn't i didn't even know that was like acceptable means <laughs> ways or what way, way yeah, to like, life aren't most people averse to violence without being on a <laughs> right i guess it's the thing like uh maybe like in terms of there might be types especially expert sensing types it's not necessarily violence it's more like um they like competition yeah like watching something violent maybe yeah right yeah um but i feel like this is a good and bad thing piece i i maybe i do just like focus on my like baseline needs like it says, neglect basic needs. So that, that may be problemsome, but I, I don't need or want like a lot of things like, ma- like materially. Like it seems like I get by with just like very little stuff. It, it's not coming from any virtue. It's just because if there's more stuff, I'm not able to um, take care of it in any way. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if the minimalist lifestyle applies to most INFPs because I'm that way too. Right. Yeah, I definitely feel that way too. Like when I'm in stores, I don't feel like, oh, I really want to buy that and take that home. Like I'm just happy to like kind of like think it's cool in the store and move on, I guess. (laughs) Right. So maybe there's like some minimal needs kind of stuff here. 